here today with me is economist Judy Shelton. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Enjoy being here. Yes, should be good. So you've got a very impressive background, but I think most recently you've received some attention for being part of President Trump's transition team. Um, what were the kinds of things you recommended to him, and do you see those things playing out now? I was, I was very honored to be part of the um, transition team. Sure. I was assigned to the Treasury. I had earlier served on the Trump Economic Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very much in favor of the pro-growth economic agenda yeah. that he is trying to enact. I think he's making some progress. I like the uh, regulatory part. I think reducing regulations is very important for business. Uh, I like the tax reform program. So I, I think we're going to end up making um, making it a much more attractive environment for corporations, and I think those benefits end up helping the people who work in those corporations. So, so I look forward to seeing uh, the economic uh, results of adopting these programs. Um, I worked on in the area of international affairs. I uh, I was I was very much impressed when um, candidate Trump made an issue of the impact of exchange rate shifts. I think that uh, particularly currency manipulation, which is a very deliberate effort to gain an advantage by changing the value of your currency uh, relative to uh, your rival or your competitor's currency in the international marketplace. Um, but I think in any case, we, we need to talk about uh, how can we really call it a, an international economy where people can come into the marketplace and compete legitimately when we don't account for the impact of exchange rate shifts. So, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can get to more fundamental monetary reform under this administration. Okay. So one big question right now is who he'll choose to be the next Fed president. Yes. Um, is he looking at people who are substantially different from each other? Could we see very different approaches depending on who's chosen? Well, um, the chairman of the Fed has become an extremely important position, probably mm -hmm. too important. We have kind of a wag the dog situation where our central bank plays too strong a role in uh, economic decision making as far as I'm concerned. Um, I wish this decision wasn't so important. Yeah. But uh, the people he's looking at are very qualified. Uh, there is an argument to be made that since in some ways the Federal Reserve caters to financial markets, if you want continuity, you don't want to undermine your program by having a, um, a, a fit because of a, or a, a taper tantrum of sorts. Um, I can see why he would be drawn to even continuing mm -hmm. with Janet Yellen. Um, to reassure markets, or possibly um, uh, Jay Powell, mm -hmm. who is uh, already on the board. He's uh, a conservative Republican. Uh, I guess I won't say conservative, but a Republican. And in that way, you make your mark on, on the Federal Reserve. Um, you have John Taylor, an excellent economist. He would like to impose a discipline of somewhat of a rule to guide Federal Reserve policy decision making. Uh, the fact that uh, John Allison was also interviewed, he's a gold standard advocate, mm -hmm. uh, to me shows that Trump is very open-minded. Um, in any case, the next chairman will have to be sensitive to markets, have to be sensitive to exchange rates, mm -hmm. and uh, will have to achieve some consensus among the other members of the Federal Reserve Governing Board. Okay. So you mentioned the gold standard. I think you're quite well known for your stance on the gold standard. Um, would returning to gold standard help the U.S. economy? What, can you talk a little about your thoughts on that? Well, I would say um, I don't see it so much as returning, but uh, more of a back to the future. Okay. I think that um, what a gold standard stands for is is monetary discipline for its its own sake. That is, if money is supposed to be a unit of account, and uh, a reliable measure and a dependable store of value, uh, it really shouldn't be subject to uh, who's the chairman of the Federal Reserve. And I think that, that money needs to be stable and provide the foundation for productive economic growth. And when money is just a variable that financial markets toss around, or it's part of a derivatives formula, or it's it's part of uh, someone speculating on currencies, it's not serving the private sector in the sense of providing that reliable unit of account so you can make plans. And under a gold standard, 
you did have that stability, and I think that's what's missing. And so um, I like the idea of a gold standard. I mean, it could be used in a very um, cryptocurrency way. The point is, do you have a unified money system so that when you talk about the international marketplace, everyone is playing on a level monetary playing field? And, and it's very important to have a rules-based approach, and that's why I'm advocating um, that that we need to look at the the virtues of a gold standard and and try to come up with something much closer to matching those, and then I think we would have more solid economic growth. Okay. We actually, we polled our readers earlier this year on whether they think um, under President Trump or future president we could go back to or the gold standard. Um, they were very positive. They think so. Most of them do anyway. I'm glad to hear that. And what are your thoughts? Is that, are we close? Is it um, lots of work to do, I guess? Well, I don't see uh, letters going out next week to invite no. <laughs> people to come to a new Bretton Woods conference at Mar-a-Lago. But, mm. um, but I do think we're already seeing language coming out of um, the Treasury that highlights the importance of um, a stable international monetary system. And I think that's new language, and I think that's reflecting the priorities of this administration. Um, our Treasury Secretary talks about a dependable dollar, and I like that the President is even willing to say that uh, a strong dollar sounds good, but otherwise there are problems. Um, that's, that's actually rather cosmopolitan. Um, normally Presidents are afraid of talking about it, but the fact is you don't really want a, a weak dollar or a strong dollar, you want a dependable dollar. And um, I think that's what what he understands at a gut level. And uh, I'm I'm hoping to see policy initiatives in conformance with that. It's it's uh, it's a difficult difficult argument to make in a world that has become used to having currencies not having any rules. But um, uh, I think we have to acknowledge that that's kind of an illogical basis for having a truly competitive international economy. Uh, it's just not fair to people if. If, if the efforts uh, that they put forth to have a quality product can be undermined through no fault of their own, but simply because the exchange rate went against them. Okay. Yeah, and this could have definitely a global impact. Well, the only country who can really bring this issue to the attention of the global community is the United States, mm. because we have the dominant reserve currency. It was our dollar convertible into gold that upheld the entire um, international monetary system following World War II up through uh, the early 70s. So it, I think the United States will remain the global leader. And um, if we show that we want to go that route, then the other countries will follow suit. Okay, those are all my questions. Thank you so much for joining me today. A pleasure, thanks for having me. Uh, once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Judy Shelton.